Ukrainian sharpshooters have proven very effective in their fight against Russian invaders. It helps that they have the biggest sniper rifle in the world in their hands, one which has some of the longest kills on record and which can penetrate most types of armor at long ranges for cheap prices. What is this rifle? How have Ukrainian forces used it? And what does it say about the future of the sniper? Let's take a look. Warfare has changed dramatically through the past three centuries. What was once an activity that relied on mass fire to compensate for the inaccuracy of early small arms and artillery has gradually become more precision-based as weapons become more accurate over longer distances. The rise of the sniper in the late 18th century, thanks to the advent of cheaper rifled barrels, is one of the best early examples of precision targeting in warfare. Demand for snipers has been high in conflicts ever since the American Revolutionary War, where they helped to turn the tide of critical battles like Saratoga in 1777. Snipers first proved their effectiveness on the battlefield against individual enemies, especially officers, which were easy to target because of the ornate uniforms that they wore. The increased range and accuracy of small arms forced officers to wear plainer clothing by the end of the 19th century. After proving themselves in the anti-personnel role, snipers began to use even larger firearms loaded with special-purpose heavy machine gun rounds to target enemy vehicles like supply trucks or even tanks. Although tank armor became too strong for these weapons to damage in World War II, anti-material rifles are still effective against a wide variety of other targets. Thanks to the advent of these rifles, the sniper became a threat not only to men on foot but even to those who were riding inside vehicles like armored personnel carriers. The sniper's effectiveness as a force multiplier continued to increase, although sharpshooters still often lacked weapons that could serve all of their needs. Early snipers tended to be hunters who were singled out for their roles thanks to their experience. This is why most sniper rifles, even into the 1970s, were adapted from hunting rifles. But such a dynamic limited the development in the kind of ammunition they could use. Things started to change in the 1980s. One of these changes was the further evolution of the sniper's increasing anti-material purpose. This was the time when the famous American 50 caliber Barrett sniper rifle was invented by a Tennessee man named Ronnie Barrett. The use of the Browning machine gun round for this weapon gave the sniper much longer reach and power, increasing the diversity of targets that could be destroyed. Dedicated sharpshooters used to targeting enemy infantry would also have a go-to weapon that could be used to target vehicles. Recruitment and training methods for snipers also started changing at this time. Typical sniper training in modern armies can take a year or more, and Ukraine was once no exception to this. However, because they are so badly needed at the front, Ukraine's sniper schools have given candidates a crash course that can be completed in a few weeks. The war in Ukraine has proven that in this age of precision artillery and drone surveillance, snipers need weapons that are accurate over increasingly long ranges to be effective and to ensure their survival. Fortunately for Ukraine, one of the weapons it has in its arsenal is the Snipex Alligator, and it's the longest sniper rifle in the world, with a length of 6 feet 6 inches when it's fully assembled. Experts have described this weapon as one which makes even previous anti-material rifles like the M107 Barrett seem like pea shooters in comparison. What are the specs of this weapon? Let's take a deep dive. The Snipex Alligator is a domestically produced rifle that made its debut in June 2020. The rifle is manufactured by a company called Zado, which was founded in 1991 in Kharkiv, Ukraine. The company has since expanded internationally with headquarters in Germany and the Netherlands. It's a nanotechnology-based chemical company that specializes in ceramics, lubricants, oil and fuel additives, not to mention firearms. Zado is an experienced manufacturer that has over 1,600 items in its company product line. Two of them are the anti-material Alligator and T-Rex rifles. The Alligator has a barrel length of 47 inches, which is more than twice the length of a typical hunting rifle designed to engage targets at long distances. Even the Barrett M107's barrel is small by comparison, at 27 inches. The rifle has a mass of 25 kilograms, weighs 55 pounds, and is chambered for the 14.5 by 114 mm anti-material round. This round, which has a mass between 59 and 66 grams and a weight of about 2.2 ounces, originated in the Soviet Union during World War II. There, it was used as the ammunition for the KPV heavy machine gun and in anti-tank rifles like the PTRS-41 and the PTRD-41, weapons which have seen some use in the Ukrainian conflict today. Since World War II, this round has been used internationally in other anti-material rifles, anti-aircraft guns, and in the machine guns mounted on armored personnel carriers. 
The 14.5 by 114 mm round comes in several different varieties, such as tracers, armor-piercing incendiary, and high-explosive incendiary. The alligator's effective range is 2 km, but it has a maximum range of 7 km. To make it more accurate, Zado designed it as a bolt-action rifle. This reduces the tilt of the battle, which would be significant for a round of this size if it was firing in semi-automatic mode. The alligator's receiver is made of steel, and its bolt guides are chrome-plated, which reduces the amount of dirt and grime built up in the barrel as a result of repeat firing. The rifle comes with a detachable box magazine that can hold five rounds inside. The muzzle velocity is almost 1,000 meters per second, nearly Mach 3. A trained shooter can fire 12 rounds per minute. The alligator can be used to attack dynamic as well as static targets. The alligator has a design that compensates for the large recoil of its round in several ways. First, its sheer weight absorbs much of the energy and keeps the weapon steady, preventing the operator from feeling its full effect. Second, it comes with a recoil isolating buttstock and a 4 or 5 baffle muzzle brake. Third, the shoulder stock is padded to reduce the wear and tear on the operator, although experts believe that this measure is likely ineffective in reducing recoil itself. The rifle has a height-adjustable cheek rest that can be installed on either the right or left side. It also comes with a carrying handle that can be changed depending on if the operator carries it with a mounted silencer. To facilitate the transport of this weapon at longer ranges, the alligator's barrel can be detached quickly from the main body. The rifle and barrel can be then stored alongside one another in a compact transport case. To increase its accuracy, the alligator can come equipped with different sighting devices and features a floating barrel that whips naturally under recoil. A folding four-position adjustable bipod and rear-adjustable monopod come with the rifle too, in order to further stabilize it when it shoots. The alligator also has a little brother, the Snipex T-Rex rifle, which is essentially the same device, but this one is in a bullpup configuration without the detachable magazine, meaning it can hold only one round at a time. Both the Alligator and T-Rex rifles are coated with a special paint called Cerakote. Although it might sound trivial, this is an important attribute in their durability. Cerakote is a ceramic paint coating that provides enhanced protection against the elements. Firearms coated with Cerakote show fewer signs of wear and tear by becoming more resistant against corrosion and abrasion. Cerakote also provides better protection for the weapon when it's exposed to potentially degrading chemicals, meaning that it can be fielded for longer and under tougher conditions before requiring repair and replacement. Prior to the advent of Cerakote, the preferred way to keep firearms protected from corrosive materials and the elements was through stainless and blued steel finishes. While this helped in many ways, the material did not hold up well in watery conditions, which are common in a frontline deployment. To protect these weapons against water, water-repellent oil was traditionally required. Cerakote solves the same problems that stainless and blued steel finishes did, while also being protective against water. Cerakote coating can be finished in different colors, enhancing the concealability of the rifle, a crucial factor for the success of any sniper. Cerakote coating cannot be done on its own, however. It requires a trained gunsmith to apply it. Ukraine's gunsmiths are therefore likely coating the alligator with Cerakote as the mission requires for the troops using it. In January 2021, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense announced that it would adopt the alligator into service based on satisfactory test results. It claimed that the alligator showed the ability to accomplish missions that current sniper rifles would not be able to do, all while managing recoil to an acceptable level. The rifles began to be introduced into use in March of that year. The arrival came just in time to be deployed in significant numbers to counter the Russian invasion that came a year later. Reports have circulated that British Special Operations soldiers have been training Ukrainian snipers in how to use the new sniper rifle. It remains to be seen if this means that the British Ministry of Defense is considering adoption of the weapon for the United Kingdom's armed forces. So far, no foreign nation has introduced the Alligator or the T-Rex into official service. It's not known how many of these rifles have been deployed in Ukraine, but it's likely that Ukrainian Special Operations Forces have made use of it in significant numbers in missions against high-priority targets. There are also likely sharpshooters armed with it in the regular infantry divisions on the front lines. Perhaps as a testament to its ability to absorb recoil, some of the women serving as snipers in the Ukrainian Armed Forces have been seen using the Alligator. One of the more famous images of this weapon is with an unidentified woman holding two of the rifles upright, revealing how much taller they are than her. The barrel, especially with a silencer attached to it, is so long that it even looks to be at least a head taller than most of the men who have taken pictures with it in the upright position. The alligator has made its mark on the battlefields of Ukraine in a few notable instances. 
The weapon reportedly saw its first significant use in the Battle of Mariupol between February and May 2022. There, the controversial Azov Brigade, which has been linked to neo-Nazi ideology and which Putin has used as an item in his propaganda justifying the war, was reportedly using the alligator to deadly effect against Russian forces before the battle ended in the city's steel plant. In November 2023, a Ukrainian soldier named Vyacheslav Kowalski set a new record for the longest confirmed sniper kill while using the alligator. He took out a Russian soldier at a distance of 3.8 kilometers (2.5 miles). This kill easily broke the previous record, which came at the hands of a Canadian Special Forces sniper in Iraq in 2017 with a range of 3.5 kilometers. That was not the only notable feat of an alligator in the hands of a Ukrainian sniper. Unfortunately, not much else is known about this incident. A year earlier, another Ukrainian sniper whose name is not known used his alligator to kill two targets at a range of 2.7 kilometers (1.8 miles). It was reported as the second most distant confirmed sniper kill at the time, behind the Canadian sniper shot. This incident is better known because there's a video of it. The Ukrainian military's strategic communications office uploaded this video to Telegram on November 13, 2022. In the video, a Russian soldier is seen walking through a tree line, with a sniper following him through the site with night vision equipped. According to popular mechanics, the site was likely at 20 times magnification. Once the Russian soldier stopped walking, the sniper fired once. About three seconds later, the target fell. Another Russian soldier, who ran in to aid his fallen comrade, was then targeted and shot. The time for the bullet to arrive to the targets, when measured against the weapon's known muzzle velocity, likely makes the video and the shot an authentic display of the Ukrainian sniper's prowess, and not an item of propaganda, as other sources were claiming. Despite these spectacular anti-personnel feats, the Alligator sniper rifle was designed primarily to serve in an anti-material role, rather than targeting individual enemy infantry. The long range at which this rifle is designed to engage its targets ensures that specific enemy personnel will be comparatively difficult for operators to reach, although the rifle can disrupt movement and formations of infantry by providing harassing fire from several kilometers away. The alligator can also be used to destroy some obstacles impeding the movement of friendly infantry, such as wooden constructions or concrete walls. The alligator is best suited to destroying light vehicles, fortified positions like dugouts, communications equipment, radar stations, ammunition and fuel deposits, air defense systems, and aircraft on a runway or in a hangar. These targets are much larger and easier to shoot from a long distance. There are even reports that the rifle is accurate enough at long ranges to target helicopters in flight, although there are no confirmed instances of such an engagement. The material targets the alligator is designed to destroy are expensive. Anti-material rifles like the Alligator and its smaller cousin the T-Rex therefore assist Ukraine in waging asymmetric warfare against its larger and more deep-pocketed attacker. The rifle's round can hit its target with 23,380 pounds about 12 tons, of force, over twice as much as that which would come from a 50 caliber Browning machine gun round. This is far more than enough force to destroy a cinder block wall. Any enemy soldier getting hit by such a round would be turned into mincemeat. According to Snipex, the rifle can penetrate 10mm steel armor at a range of 1.5 kilometers. That's enough force to punch through the side armor of Russian armored personnel carriers like the BTR-80, putting all of the troops inside in danger. According to the Oryx blog, Russia has lost 1,196 armored fighting vehicles as of February 19, 2024. 802 of them have been destroyed. It's also lost 3,435 infantry fighting vehicles and 397 armored personnel carriers. These estimates are likely understatements because Oryx only counts visually confirmed losses. It's not known how many of these losses came at the hands of Ukrainian snipers using the Alligator, but Ukraine's defenders having access to a powerful and cheap anti-material weapon is certainly responsible for part of the destruction that Russia has faced. More lightly armored targets, like supply trucks, are easy prey to the alligator's round. Ukrainian snipers armed with it have undoubtedly used it to disrupt the columns supplying Russian forces, increasing the logistical difficulties that the Kremlin's armies have suffered during the war. A video released on September 29, 2022, demonstrates the alligator's anti-material function. The video showed a Ukrainian sniper using it to engage an armored target from a distance of over 2 kilometers. The target in the grainy video was identified as a Russian tank. The sniper landed at least one shot on the vehicle, with the video cutting shortly afterward. Although the vehicle was not destroyed or showed any signs of significant damage, it demonstrated the range at which a trained alligator operator could fire with effect, 
and the grave danger that it poses to more lightly armored Russian vehicles. The danger increases the closer the sniper gets. At 100 meters, the alligator's round can penetrate 30 millimeters of steel armor, putting heavier units at risk, although this would also put the sniper in far greater danger. Escaping after a shot while carrying such a long and heavy load will not be easy. For this reason, most sniping missions with the alligator will come at longer ranges. Part of the reason for the importance of the alligator's anti-material function is that it's a much cheaper option to destroy these targets than other portable anti-armor weapons. For example, a Javelin missile can cost $80,000 a piece. The launcher itself runs into six figures. These pieces of equipment also require a sophisticated supply chain in order to manufacture and transport, which means their numbers will necessarily be limited. In contrast, the alligator will cost four or five figures. The rifle's precise price tag is not listed. There are also millions of 14.5 by 110 mm rounds available to use, and it's easy to manufacture more of them locally. The presence of the alligator allows for Ukrainian forces to avoid using expensive javelin or NLAW rounds on lower priority targets, saving them as they were intended to be used against enemy main battle tanks. This is another way that the alligator's presence assists Ukraine's asymmetric fight against Russia. As good as it is, the alligator comes with dangers to the operator. We've mentioned its length and weight potentially making escape difficult, and that's not the only thing a sniper using it needs to worry about. Although it can carry a silencer to reduce its profile, the muzzle flash created when firing a round is huge. One commentator compared its brightness to that of a hand grenade going off. Even with a flash suppressor, it's an easy profile to make out, so the sniper will be vulnerable after having taken the shot. This is why the rifle is designed to engage targets at such long ranges. Such distance is one of the only ways to ensure a good level of safety for the sniper using it. Although it is notable that in a 2021 training video released by the Ukrainian military, the flash profile of the weapon was much lower when it was equipped with a silencer. The arrival of the alligator and T-Rex on the battlefield shows that the role of the sniper continues to evolve. Ranges are getting longer, with the record for the longest recorded sniper kill changing hands more frequently in the last decade. Anti-material snipers have also shown their importance in modern peer or near-peer conflicts. Precision missiles, artillery shells, and rocket-based anti-tank or anti-aircraft munitions get depleted rapidly under such conditions, with both sides in the conflict suffering from a shortage. Users will therefore need to be careful in how they decide to use their sophisticated precision ammunition. The response to this reality has been to go retro. In many other ways, old is new. For example, Ukrainian forces have relied on old-style flak cannons to shoot down Iranian Shahed drones, because using sophisticated missiles to do so is an uneconomical use of resources. The alligator demonstrates the same principle against targets on the ground. The sniper will always be a danger to enemy personnel, especially against high-value targets who aren't being careful. However, it is in the anti-material role that snipers of the later 21st century might see their most effective use. Will the snipers of the future, armed with weapons like the alligator, prove to be a danger to increasingly more expensive pieces of enemy equipment for cheaper prices? Don't forget to let us know what you think about this weapon and what the future of the sniper is. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more military analysis from military experts.